Have you ever thought to yourself, why am I so bad at exams? Why can't it come easy, like FIFA? I've had this thought many times, but it turns out there is a scientific reason why exams are harder than gaming. Now, of course, it is much more fun to pull an all-nighter playing Fortnite than studying for your chemistry final, but what if exams really were actually as easy to pick up as your favorite game? I'm Daryl, and this is Thought Burst. Let's imagine a typical class day. Now, since everyone struggles with different subjects, I'll try to keep this pretty universal. Picture this. It's Monday, and you're stuck in your 8 a.m. economics of uh, biochemical philosophical science lab 102. Your instructor hands out chart X to you and your classmates. He explains all the different factors in red act on the factors in blue. For example, a T acting on an I would produce a double effect. Similarly, an H would only produce a half effect on a Y. After explaining, he gives you some optional practice problems in the textbook and says you will be tested on Friday with several problems that use chart X. The chart will not be provided on the exam, so you'll be expected to have it memorized. Oh, and it's 30% of your grade. Good luck. Now, answer me this. How would you go about studying for this? What about memorizing this? Do you honestly think you could? Well, if you don't think you could, maybe chart Y will change your answer. This is the type chart from Pokemon, which shows what types of attacks are effective against different types of Pokemon. Oh, and chart X is an exact copy of chart Y. The exact same values are represented on this table as the Pokemon table. I just changed the types to factors to make it appear more intimidating. Now I'm willing to bet that a lot of you, whether you realize it or not, already have chart Y memorized, and know exactly how each of the types interact. So if we have chart Y memorized so easily, why were we so worried about learning a new chart that carries the exact same information? In short, it's how we learn it, or how we encode it. Let's go back to the practice problems Professor Spinglebottom gave us earlier. They're optional. Are we going to do them? Maybe, if we're serious about our grades. Now, let's look at the equivalent of practice problems in Pokemon, the battles. Are we going to battle? If we want to beat the Elite Four and the Champ, of course we are. Now, each battle requires that you 1. know what type of attack you're using, 2. what type or types your opponent's Pokemon is, and 3. if your attack will be effective, which is what we need the chart for. Just this attack is one single problem in Dr. S's textbook. And it's a three-step problem, but it doesn't stop there because it works in reverse. So now, your opponent attacks, and you'd better hope that your Pidgey isn't weak against Rock. So now we have two three-step problems in one turn of a Pokemon battle. Suddenly, the textbook is looking a little different. Now, this is crucial. The lesson here is when you study, practicing problems is going to be much more helpful than just skimming over the notes a few times and hoping it sticks. I think we're all guilty of lazy studying, especially when it's a lot of information. But skimming doesn't work. To understand why, we have to understand something called the generation effect. In 1978, Norman Slameka and Peter Graff conducted a study of several undergraduates and discovered that people are generally better at recognizing words if they had previously produced or generated them than if they had just simply read them. Each student in group A was given an antonym and a single letter. For example, the word happy and then the letter S. The student then had to fill in the blank. So, in our example, they generated the word sad because it's the opposite of happy and it starts with an S. The student read the word aloud. They repeated this down a list of 20 plus words. Group B simply read their list of words quietly to themselves. Later, both groups were asked to remember as many words as they could from that list. As you might have guessed, group A was significantly better at recalling words than group B. And that is the generation effect. When you produce information, you're much more likely to remember it. This is likely because by generating it, you create more associations with that word or information. You not only have the word sad to remember, but you could also recall that it started with an S, or that it was the opposite of happy. It almost gives your mind keywords or tags so that when you go to retrieve that information from your memory, it's easier and more likely to be found. The exact same thing happens in Pokemon, when you can't remember if Psychic is weak to Bug, but suddenly you do remember that your Beedrill's pen missile was strong against an Alakazam. Keywords and key images. By producing the information in a unique way, in this case, trying numerous bizarre and colorful attacks, you learn the information in a more meaningful way, which makes it so much easier to remember later. 
This is why practice problems work, because in each battle, you're going to try an attack and consciously produce a decision. But unlike the exam, this is a safe environment. When you make a mistake, and you will, you can just retry the problem, or run to the Pokemon Center, or reset your game. This is how we learn, trial and error. The generation effect makes this a lot easier, but waiting to start trying things out until the exam is a bad idea. Exams become 10 times more stressful when they're the first time we have allowed ourselves to make mistakes. Don't add that pressure onto yourself. You'd never rush straight into the final boss with no prior experience or preparation, would you? Don't make that mistake on exams. And by the way, Pokemon isn't the only game where you learn through trial and error like this. In fact, most games are classes, full with an exam at the end. Seriously. Look at Ocarina of Time. Each dungeon of the game gives you a new item, teaches you how to use it, and most importantly, when to use it. And then, when you hit Ganon's castle, you're expected to be able to use all the skills you've learned interchangeably and at the right time. Then, when school is out, you go to tennis practice. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door does the same thing, and it literally has chapters. In Chapter 2, you learn how to use Flurry to blow away loose wallpaper. After Chapter 6, you learn about the Ultra Hammer, and before Chapter 3, you learn the Ground Pound. Then, in the Palace of Shadow, at the end of the game, you get several nice bits like this. Dead Space 2 is another great example of this. Early in the game, you're learning how to deal with each of the different types of necromorphs, but they typically only send you one of a kind in each swarm. This is similar to having a quiz on only linear equations, a quiz on only quadratics, and one only on polynomials throughout the semester. However, towards the end game, Dead Space will expect you to know how to beat a lurker, a pregnant, and an exploder all in one segment, just like your Algebra 2 final will have linear equations, quadratics, and polynomials riddled throughout. This may sound silly, but I think we all struggle with exams because they're treated like exams. It's the same reason we all lose our minds when a new big time title is announced. The expectation that an exam is going to suck and that a game is going to be a blast affects us more than we realize. Because when you strip each down to the core, they're just challenges that require time and learning to overcome. So keep your head up if you're struggling in school. You're a gamer in more ways than one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you in some way, and if so, please think about sharing it with a friend or with your instructor. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you'd like more content like this. I'm also considering doing a follow-up video to this on how to implement the generation effect into your studying. If that's something you're interested in, definitely let me know in the comments. Thanks again, everybody.